hey guys welcome back to the channel and welcome to a highly requested video the guide to necropolis easy path now there's a lot of lot to talk about so stay till end of the video and while you're at it like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet already we are going to cover the angst of necropolis masteries and boost strategy revives in potion farming which one is actually the easy path and the most viable champs and a 5x5 five five breakdown at the end of it. So let's jump right into it. Angst of Necropolis. This is the most important piece of information you need to understand. These are called the nodes of Necropolis and there are total 4 of them. First one is Necropolis 1 that will cap all the damage taken by Defender to 1.5% of their maximum health. Ank of Necropolis 2 will enable SP3 from the Defenders and increase the damage by 800%. So 1 SP3 and you're dead. Necropolis uh, Ankh number 3 is going to be your willpower potency is reduced by 50% and your duration for immortality and indestructible is reduced by 1000%. So you won't have that extra life that a lot of champions including Hercules has. And finally the most important one the Ankh of Necropolis 4. There's a lot to talk about here so let's dive into it. Every time you start a fight, there are a set number of vengeance charges. Now these charges depend on the rank and rarity of your champion. The higher the rank and the rarity of your champion, the more are the starting charges. A 7 star rank 3 starts with 220 charges. A 7 star rank 2 starts with 210. A 7 star rank 1 starts with 200 charges. Moving on to the 6 stars, the 6 star rank 5 ascended starts with 160. 6 star rank 5 starts with 150 and a 6 star rank 4 starts with 140. Now every time these charges drop to half of their starting point, the defender's special attacks will root you in place and gain 200% extra damage. At 0 charges, the defenders become passively unblockable and gain 15% bar of power every second. Now these charges dictate the length of the fight in one go. In other words, taking skill out of the equation how long can you fight against the defender in one go and how many revives will it cost you for a fight this can be determined by the rank and the rarity of your champion now these charges are reduced by one every second every time you or the defender use a special attack if you use a striker that will add six more charges to the counter another nuance here is use your highest ranking or rarity striker because that will fill up the spirit meter faster. The more spirit meter you fill, the more uh, strikers you will use and the more charges you can add to the counter and the longer the fight will be. If we understand the node. So let's talk about how we can maximize the fight times and what should be our mastery setup and boost strategy. With the Ank of Necropolis 4 rewarding you with spamming specials and your strikers, the easy answer is not to run suicides and preferably use your ascended champs with boosts to maximize your damage. But as always, we have an anomaly that is Aegon. With him, the approach is a little different. So until you build up to 999 hits on the combo meter, you run without suicides. You build up that combo meter and spam your specials. And once you are at 999, you push those suicides on and then you boost to the max and then you go in without using any specials to do the maximum amount of damage. But if you're gonna run champions like Kate, Absorbing Man or other viable champions like She-Hulk, no suicides is the best way to go. Now there are two contenders for the easy path, one starting with Titania and the other starting with Mr. Fantastic. But with the community consensus, the Titania path that is the easier one with Take Your Medicine node. There are a total of 15 fights including Grandmaster for which if you plan right can be done with least revives and potions. Ideally champs designed for long form, co long form content with 6 or 7 star rarity with the highest rank possible and equipped with a 6 star relic. Now a lot of champions can fit that definition. So for your skill class Aegon and Baron Zemo. Mutant class there is Strife. For tech class, there is Guillotine 2099 and the best one for the Abyss, Shuri. For Mystic class, Wong is a great contender. And for Science class, She-Hulk and for Cosmic class, it's Vox. 
Now there are also some other high DPS shot options like Kate Bishop and niche counters like Guardian, Chavez and Absman to name a few that can work well for certain fights. So you pick your main damage dealer and then you slot the other ones in. So here is a quick builder to help you plan out your path. So let's talk about the team builder. Now this is a very quick team builder that I've made. So before I start let me tell you that you won't be able to make any changes on this one. I have locked it out. So what you need to do is to go to the file menu and download a new one. So if you go to the file menu and you do make a copy you can download one for yourself. So now that we have that out of the way. Now this is the path of the defenders that are going to be there and these are the options that you can take them down with. Here is a revive counter. So all you need to do is to go to the primary attacker right here and you can choose who is going to be your primary attacker. So I've given the option of Kate Bishop, Aegon, Wong and Shuri. So you can select any one of them and you will notice that it will change right here. So it will show you which are the fights is our primary attacker can take. So I'll do change again. So Aegon can take all the fights. If I go to Shuri, Shuri can take Titania, Captain Britain, Wiccan, Psychoman, Valkyrie, Red Guardian and Sam Wilson. So all I'm going to do is come here and select Shuri right here. The ones the fights are already selected. So I have an idea, okay, my main attacker is going to be Shuri and she can take most of the fights. Then I will go into the fights that are not yet assigned and look for niche counters. So for example right here, Arcus and Airwalker, I know both are cosmic champions. I can either use a Wong here or I can use uh, Absorbing Man, both of them can work for me. So I'm going to go ahead and use Absorbing Man for both of them because I have an Absorbing Man that is... <coughs> that is uh, ascended so he can take both of those fights next up is guardian as well i can also use uh, absorbing man but i'm gonna hold off that because i see omega sentinel also here so i can take hercules for both of those fights so i can just click over here with hercules and hercules and also finally i have a noah again for noah i can use absorbing man so just like that i can create all the counters and that shows that I have only three people on my team. So I need to add one more for reverse controls for Grandmaster. So I can just write here Wiccan. Because I have it as a rank 4. And also one Heimdall if I need to eat an SP3. So I can use a Heimdall as well. So that is going to be my team. Now if you ask me how much revives is going to take me. It's really going to depend on what is the rank of my primary attacker. So I'm using Shuri and the rank I have is 7 star rank 3. So with a 7 star rank 3 I'm confident it will take at least 3 on average. Some fights you can solo, some fights you won't be able to. Like for example Captain Britain fight can be easily soloed with Shuri. Same goes for Psycho Man as well. So you will use less here. But on an average you will use 3 revives per fight. So 42 revives you will need. Now remember, if you change the rank, the number of revives will also change. So for example, 7 star rank 1 will cost you 10 each. So yeah, 140 will be a safe bet to go. So this is how you would use this, um, uh, this is how you will use this uh, builder. But again, if you want a reference, here is a complete reference of which fights can be done by which champion. So if you don't want to go through this route where you can just choose a primary attacker, you can look over here and you can also choose and add the counters here. And that's how you can use it. Remember to farm your revives at 5.4.6 until they nerf it till uh, I think first week of January or January 15. So just be wary about that and have at least 10 to 15 extra for Grandmaster. Then you should be able to run a good... Uh, uh, team with this builder if you have any questions about this let me know if you want to add more if you want me to make changes let me know in the comment section i can do that as well so let's now before we jump on to the fight by fight analysis the final thing to check out is how to farm revives and potions so the best bet is to do your daily quest that refreshes and also for now 5.4.6 there's already been a post on the forums that it will be nerfed, but now is the right time to get those in. Experts, I would say average of 350 revives will be good. If you're going to run an Aegon with the Ascended Aegon, 
so yeah so six parts 350 revives will do the job for you so i hope that helps now let's jump into the path and discuss every single fight Fight by fight breakdown, I'm gonna talk about each fight for roughly 2 minutes. So, first one is Titania, the node on her is going to be Necrotic Boon Haymaker, so whenever you will dash back, you will gain a timer on yourself, you dash back again, that will be removed and you will give, uh, you will get on yourself weaknesses and if you dispel those weaknesses that will reduce the charges on the haymaker so titania can go unstoppable and unblockable and indestructible again and again and again now if you're going to use aegon this is going to be the place where you are going to uh, ramp him up the two options that work really well here one is aegon another one that is going to be your kate bishop so with Aegon is pretty simple. I would again suggest you if your Aegon is not rank 5 or ascended, try not to attempt with a rank 4. It will cost you a lot of revives. Even getting up to a rank 5 if you don't want to ascend will work really well for you. So get a rank 5 Aegon. Do not run suicides at this point and uh, just go in and try to build up the combo bring in proxima synergy so if you get hit once you have the chance to exit and go back in this can cost you around five to ten revives depending on what the rank of your aegon is i used rank four first in my first run it cost me around 12 revives to ramp up and take down titania with the rank five it only cost me five and i was able to go up to 200 combos as well so again uh, best choice would be he, if you're gonna bring Aegon, have five to ten revives, ramp him up to at least seven hundred combo, and you can move that on to the next fight. You've seen plenty of solos with Arc with uh, Kate Bishop for this fight. I'll also link it in the description, so check that out. Next fight is going to be Arcus, and I'm gonna hand over to my buddy Normax to explain the fight with Wong. All right, so for the first fight, the Arcus fight. Um, you want to start in green spells if you're if your Wong is awakened if he's not it doesn't matter Just go to green, but you want to start in green because a, there's a lot of energy damage and the cold snaps and the special twos and all that So depending on the rank of your Wong, you might not Be as topped up as you would want if you don't start in green So try to do that and then rotate to blue or orange. It doesn't matter Just try to get the nine spells throw special twos in between then start spamming sp2 to refresh the only thing with Arcus is that he gets power gains and Wong can control power. So the only thing he can do is really fate seal with the special three, which is good. But the issue with Arcus and the node is that if you parry to remove his shrug so you can fate seal him, the tranquilize might just fail the fate seal to begin with. So you might not even place it. But if you don't parry and you let him shrug it, then it's going to cancel out all the power gains. It's going to remove the buffs, but it's also going to remove itself because he shrugged it. But at least the power gains are not there and then you have time to build to the special twos and then by the time he gets back to five and the power game becomes a little bit annoying again then you can just throw another special three but you have a bunch of special twos in between so it's it's not it's not that bad once you get to the flow of the fight his special twos are energy so if you eat it to the block it's okay you won't take any damage but that's about it for arcus thanks no max so the node here is going to be smoke world and it's all about power gain so if you are going to bring in an Aegon, uh it's going to be like a war of attrition i would highly suggest you to have a heimdall in your team so at least you can eat one sp3 and you can stay in longer in the fight yep and that's pretty much about it you have to use one or two revive make sure you get your 999 combo so here are two different perspectives how you're gonna take the arcus fight if you ask me i would say the better option will be going with either an avsman or a wong and that would be a much better way to take him down Next up we have an Omega Sentinel. Now sh by this time you should have 999 combos already built and you should be going unblockable. Now the node here is going to be adaptive body and the sh Omega Sentinel will go in three different phases depending how much life she is lost at 100% at 70% and 40%. That's not going to really matter if you're going to use an Aegon with 999 combo. 
by this time when you have your combo ready you can turn on your suicides if you're not going to fight a walker with a gun as well so with those suicides and some crazy boosts you should be able to fight this one pretty easy and pretty quickly keep her to an sp1 and you should be good another perspective coming right now by normax with the wong how to take her down and for the omega sentinel fight it's really it's pretty easy the auto block isn't a big deal because the sun is really short especially if you if you run the limber mastery and the only thing really is just make sure your special two is unblockable so she doesn't block it but if she does it's fine if you take a hit if you eat a special two to block if you eat a special one to block it really doesn't matter just build your spells start and preferably start in i don't know blue green i feel like green is good if you want to like block all the specials to begin with but blue is also good because she generates armor ups you get a lot of power fast but honestly it doesn't really matter it's a pretty it's a pretty basic fight just make sure the special two is unblockable don't eat specials to the face block them as much as you want but if you eat them to the face you might crit and you might die even as a rank three he was taking a bunch of damage if i like just miss the special so for safety just block it you're gonna heal everything back it's no big deal but other than that it's a it's pretty basic the incinerate from auto block you're gonna heal from the stun is pretty short so really not much to it Thanks mate. Now the next fight is going to be an air walker and it's probably the most annoying fight in all of Necropolis. Well there are some others that are close contenders. Right now you are looking at a Wong takedown from Normax. Unfortunately I don't have his commentary on this but I can give you a perspective here and you go with Aegon. If you go with Aegon here by this time have your I would say suicides on you but I think a better way is to do not have suicide so you can throw your sp1s and knock him down this fight is all about knocking him down and making sure that his power of Garectus does not come online because if it does come online he is going to heal and he's going to go unstoppable gain three bars of power and it's an instant death so especially if you try to nullify that uh, or try to remove that for some reason that's going to be a, an instant sp3 and death so I would say if you're going to bring in an Aegon, use your heavies, use your SP1s. And probably this is the last fight without suicides with Aegon. After this, it gets easier. Now, if you have somebody like Absman or Wong, they make this fight significantly easier with those special spams and uh, also the heavies. So that goes without saying that if you're going to do this fight with Wong or if you're going to do this fight with Absman, you just don't run any kind of suicides. Suicides will only work with... Uh, your uh, Aegon. Another thing here, block his SP2s or block his specials to avoid the armor break and the degen that he gives you. So that can help you out there as well. So yeah, just very quick tips. This is going to be an annoying fight. Keep in mind that you're going to use around 10 to 15 revives even with a fully boosted Aegon if you don't knock him down and again and again. So this fight can be frustrating but hang in there. You should be able to bring him down within 10 to 15 or a maximum of 17 revives my best one was with absman i was able to bring it down at only five but my absman is ascended and i was fully boosted as well in magma form so just to give you a perspective of this fight after this the easy path becomes actually easy Next up, you're going to have a Captain Britain, and the node on her is going to be Psionic Control. So whenever a debuff is purified off her, the controls are reversed on the attacker. So this fight, it can be very tricky if you try to dex the specials. If you don't, then it's a much easier fight. I've done this fight with an Aegon and also done with a Shuri. I would say if you have a Shuri, that will be a much easier fight. But this fight can also be done with Aegon. Here's a perspective from Roma Normax coming up. But again, by this time, you should be having your suicides on if you're running Aegon. And just uh, block the SP1s, do not dex them, and you should be good. It will take three to four revives and you should be, get you should be getting through this fight. The only thing I'd say is don't bother risking dexing the special one. Special two is pretty easy. But special one, don't bother dexing it because sometimes you have inverted controls and you don't realize. And sometimes you think you have them, but you don't. That caught me off guard a bunch of times. And you can eat special ones to the block as much as you want with her because it's all energy. But if you take a hit and it crits with all the prowess, Wong heals after taking the hit. So if you take 10% damage, you take the 10 and then you heal back the 10 or like 9-ish. But if the special kills you and you don't, you're not running Heimdall, then it's just it's going to kill you. You won't have time to heal. 
So that's the only thing with Captain Britain. It's just block the specials. It's not a big deal. He's going to heal it back. Um, and what else? Just the combos are going to heal you up. Like they won't really do any damage because they're all energy too. Uh, try to start in blue because she gains a lot of buffs. So it's really easy to build up. But other than that, just make sure you don't accidentally dex a special one. If you're feeling too comfortable, sure. But I've done it a bunch of times and I died at like 5% because I'm just, I didn't realize that I didn't have inverted controls or that I did. So it's easier to just block. But yeah, other than that, it's a pretty easy fight. Thanks, Nomix, for an, an amazing breakdown on that fight. Now, moving on to the simple, whenever you have same bar of power, both of you like one bar each, there's a timer and un if it stays like that he steals one of your power so keep throwing your specials goes without saying that by this time if you're not using Aegon there should be no suicides if you're using Aegon go with suicides pretty straight and simple and easy fight here is Nomex version with Wong now for Wiccan he's not bad you just want to make sure you start in green like start building up your green spells because if you want to parry freely you're gonna get incinerated when you like deck stuff and trigger buffs so starting green and once you get like to like 70 percent don't bait special ones because uh, wiccan heals 100 percent of all the energy damage you dealt to him and wong's like 90 percent of his damage is energy so one time he threw a special one when he was at 30 percent and he shot right back to 60. so it's it's a lot of healing try to push the special twos hard block as much as you can if you can maybe you can fate seal him as he's regening but i wouldn't risk it because he takes for like 150k once he gets really low, so it's really annoying. But other than that, the specials into block are fine, and it's all energy damage, even as basic combos. Just uh, be careful once the second enrage hits, then the incinerates, uh, because they reduce your block proficiency by a lot, and his attack goes up by like 200%, the special two into block hits pretty hard. So try to dex it, the incinerates don't do as much damage, but the damage into block does. So depending on the rank of your Wong, and if you're boosted or not, you might want to like try dexing, at least. But other than that, it's just special one, make sure he doesn't throw it. And yeah, like you don't even have to worry about the incinerate from his base kit, because it doesn't do too much, it just reduces block proficiency. But it's really not a big deal. Another great breakdown of a fight using Wong by Normax. Make sure you check out on the right side. I am mentioning what kind of champions for a specific fight. So the next fight is against Psycho Man and the node is called Control Box. Now this fight is fun in a way that every 12 seconds on the timer, a random action is selected, either a heavy attack, special attack or block an attack. Now during special attack this timer is paused so you have to use that particular special attack uh, use that particular action otherwise you will be punished and you are dealt the burst damage 50 percent of your max health so it's it sounds it's a difficult one it's pretty easy to manage so right here there's performer heavy so i'm just gonna I'm just waiting out for him to throw his SP2. Uh, ideally, you want to keep him to an SP1 only. And uh, by the time the enrage is hit, uh, Shuri is really tanky. But you can get through this fight with Aegon as well. Just slap on those suicides, have that 999 combo. And just repeat the actions that they're requested. Right now, they're requesting for a special attack. So you can throw that out. So you can pretty easily get this fight down in one or two revives. I've done this fight with both Aegon and also Shuri. I found Shuri was much more easier to deal with this fight. And with Aegon as well, I wasn't running Suicide and was a rank 4. So that was a difficult one. But then I came back and ran it with a rank 5 Aegon. So it was substantially easier. But if you have a Shuri, she's just made for this content. She will make a lot of it easier. So yeah, pretty uh, simple. Just follow the actions that are giving to you. So. If you're gonna run a team, I would say for this particular fight, Shuri or Aegon is the choice. If you have Airwalkers or any of those Wiccans or Cosmic Champions, you can go with Wong. And Normax is giving an amazing breakdown for those. So just there, Heimdall saved my ass again. So yeah, that is a quick breakdown of Psycho Man. Let's move on to the next. That will be a Guardian taking a right from the fork. So let's discuss that fight. Now this next fight is going to be a okay. guardian. This is where your easy path gets substantially easy. After this, all the fights are not really difficult. 
you can easily run through with one or two revives with Aegon on a 999 combo, preferably on a rank 5 and a 6 star relic that is very important and you keep throwing those specials and keep using those relics and uh, you can keep extending your timer. Now the node here is going to be force field so every 6 seconds the defender will gain an indefinite armor up and there is a max stack of 5 and once you hit in the block one of the armor is, uh, is removed. But also whenever the defender will block an attack they gain 10% bar of power so it's a it's a it's like a cat and mouse so you can also take him down with the wong so you can check out normex channel for that he has a great breakdown for it i'm gonna specifically talk about aegon with aegon at 999 this fight is just a joke because you are always blockable one thing i would say that i did not do in my first or even second run was i did not use the ability of aegon to get furies effectively while he's hit you can once you're at 999 combo you get unstoppable you can use that ability and pretty much keep the uptime on the furies the whole way i've seen some amazing solos with aegon hitting 45,000 per hit so yeah that's something you can also tap into and practice a little and these fights much be much shorter so just if you notice here easily i'm taking him down to 78 percent these are just two minute clips that show you that eventually these fights just become one or two uh, just become like one or two revives and it takes you like five to six minutes to take one of these defenders down but again the, these are the easier fights uh, Wong also works here. You can even bring in an Absman with his unblockable specials and heavy spam. He can work here as well. So plenty of options that you can use. You can even use a Shuri here. So all, so although he will reduce a lot of the shock damage, but she can work with a longer fight. Now next defender is going to be a Valkyrie. I don't have footage for that, so I'm going to show a long captain america cap sam solo and during which we will discuss valkyrie also also red guardian will end up with cap sam so apologies for that but for your first valkyrie the node is going to be dragon fang now whenever you will hit her in the block the combo meter is increased by six and she will gear a pierce passive now whenever defender will activate a special attack if she does not have a pierce the special attack will cause 100 percent less power what that means that she needs to have peers for her power to be drained when she uses a special. If not, if she is at 2 bar of power, she will keep spamming special and all of that becomes a problem. So, the way you handle that is in the beginning of the fight, you just hit into the block. You can use a champ like Shuri and you can just keep hitting into the block and let those peers build up. Once you have those peers build up, once she gets an SP1 with hitting in the block, then you can go in and attack her. Now this is going to be an annoying to deal with uh, but uh, you need that pierce on her otherwise she goes into a loop of throwing specials over and over and over again and becomes pretty annoying. You can also take her down with uh, Aegon. With Aegon is pretty straightforward. Uh, he's going to be unblockable. Just use a Heimdall, uh, Heimdall's uh, in your team with Aegon. Bring in those uh, revives and you can literally blast through it with two or three maximum. If you can give her some peers, that also works. If you can block one or two hits, that will give her peers as well. So if you let her hit once or twice in your block, she will gain a pierce and that pierce will stay on for a longer time. So you can use that. And uh, But remember, that's going to be a bit of damage, but that's okay. Especially when you're running Aegon, you can just uh, give her a pierce and just start laying into her. And with all of your suicides on and all of that crazy damage and anyway, you're going to use a heavy attack. When you do use a heavy attack, she's invited to hit you, but you're in the destructible by that time. You do not take damage and unstoppable and that will help you bypass both of them so aegon is a really uh, cool champion for this fight and you can run through her quite easily next one we're going to talk about is going to be red guardian now by this time all of these champions coming up are like pretty easy she uh, he will have three phases so at the start of phase one red guardian will lose one durability in his abrasive shield and you have to use only heavy attack uh, to remove those charges once he goes to 70 percent it becomes fractured shield becomes fractured and it's always at eight second cooldown but all of this can be thrown out of the window if you're gonna just use an aegon why i say aegon here he's not the only champion you can use you can also use uh, uh, 
Kate Bishop, she works amazingly well here as well. So you just have to be careful about the different phases he goes through. So in phase two, when he goes down to 70% health, his shield becomes fractured and the cooldown is always 8 seconds. So you know, if you hit the, during his fractured shield, he can auto block you. So that will be a slight problem. But with Aegon being unblockable on 1999, he makes a piece of cake of that. Also, if you're going to use... Um, if you're going to use a kid bishop, she can reduce ability accuracy, so you don't have to worry about that. And once he goes down to 40% health, every 12 second bow champions gain unblockable passive for 4 seconds. So, again, uh, if you play it right and you keep hitting him with the good strikers, he will always be throwing specials. And once he throws specials, you can always be evad uh, evading them and going back in. Especially the specials are very easy to evade. And then finally, uh, from these three fights, we have uh, Cap Sam. Cap Sam is going to have an XO8 Falcon. So whenever a defender will block an attack, the defender is inflicted with a rupture debuff for eight seconds, which uh, depending on what kind of champion you're gonna use is not gonna be a problem. Now, what you see right now is uh, a fight by Nomax. He is using a Wong and because ruptures are all going to be, uh, he can easily bypass them because of their energy based damage and he is very trigger happy with his sp1 so let him keep throwing his sp1 and wong's special attacks are unblockable so you don't have to worry about any of those ruptures because the special attacks will land once he has all of his blessings ready all he's going to do is charge his heavy get the sp2 and throw that sp2 and that refreshes over and over again now wong keeps throwing those specials that means that the anks uh, are going to be for stable because they are paused during the special attacks and then he also gets the striker very quickly so Vuong is a pretty fun champion to have for necropolis and the nodes there Aegon same old story 999 hits and you can just keep Capsam to an sp1 and go lay into and keep hitting him the unblocker will help you out and you can easily clear out this fight you can also use Kid Bishop here. Uh, another good one is going to be Shuri. So quite a few different options. He's very SP1 trigger happy. So you don't need to worry much about that. So uh, again, uh, I have not tried all the options I'm giving you. But I'm pretty sure about Wong and Aegon. And uh, yeah, so these champions do work. Uh, it will cost you maximum one or two revives. And you can get through it. This is like the tail end of the easy part. So you should be able to get through it. Again, if you have any questions leave a uh, leave them in the uh, description and leave them in the comments down below and i will also link a lot of different youtubers how they did different fights so if you are if you want to see more than a two minute preview you can go down check out the whole fights and that will help as well i'll make sure to tag all of them so a big thank you for all the communities to bringing around all of these videos so that will help us out a lot so i will leave you to it to finish off this solo with cap sam and i'll see you on the dragon man fight And now for Dragon Man, he's not really that, but he's pretty basic fight. Just build your spells however you want. 
Um, you don't have to play in the corner. You can if you want. If you're comfortable with him, you can play in the corner so the stun immunity doesn't doesn't like become a thing. But he's very special happy, at least in my runs. He was very, very special happy. I didn't even have to like bother baiting that much. Um, the special 2 into block is energy, so it won't do any damage. If you need to, you can stun him to remove the power gain. But really, with Wong, it's just... It's like a basic fight. You don't really have to do too much. You don't worry about it. Just build your spells. Make sure he doesn't have the power gain and he's going to special 3. Try to bait SP1s because he's more happy with that. And, you know, you can like eat a blocked hit and then get rid of the power gain if he has the stun immunity. Um, if you feel like you really want to get rid of the power gain, you can throw a special 3 because it's going to fade seal for a bit. But it's really not that big of a deal. At least in the runs. I, I did it like three, four times that fight. It was really easy. And yeah, like you don't really have to worry about the fight too much. It's not that big of a deal. Another cool breakdown by Normax on how to use Wonk against Dragon Man. Now the way the Dragon Man nodes work, it's called tactical programming. So every time you land a critical hit on him, he's gonna gain a dormant stun immune charge. And on reaching three charges, all of these charges are consumed and defender will gain stun immunity for six seconds which is not much uh, to worry about because uh, with wong most of the energy damage you can block and with Aegon, you are unblockable anyway so you don't need to wait for him to give you openings having said that i would say heimdall would be really good here with Aegon. heimdall can block one of the specials for you and uh, Aegon can do a lot of damage but again this is more of baiting it out i mean nomex <laughs> fight went really well that he was so trigger happy dragon man but for me with ego it was a little uh, it was a little difficult because he kept almost getting to sv3 again and again it cost me with a six star rank four around four revives and with a six star rank five it cost me only one so i would say if you get to an sp1 just try to block that out and you should be good and that will take away the power gain so you don't have the looming threat of and the second last fight before Grandmaster is going to be a Captain America Infinity War. Again, a very simple and easy fight. So every 8 seconds, he will cycle to a class ability. So for every class, so Mutant, Skill, uh, Mystic, Cosmic, Tech. And if he struck while he has 5 or more kinetic potential charges, he will consume all of them. And it, it will inflict a concussion buff on you for 10 seconds, reducing your ability accuracy by 100 it's a, a joke of a fight to be honest very easy almost at the end of the path so if you're going to use an Aegon he will just simply blast through it because of his natural class advantage and also he can remove any kind of ability accuracy that is uh, applied on him or any kind of debuff he can easily remove them you can also use a gate bishop here to the same effect she will do amazing for this fight also both sp1 and sp2 are easily evadable and you can use uh, both of them late into the fight even on this on this ankh of necropolis 4 it goes into in second phase so you can use that as well even if you're rooted the sp1 and sp2 can be evaded so that gives you an advantage and gives you almost a solo if you play it right uh, shuri can also work here i think a good champion here would be uh, Zeke Baron Zemo as well, although I haven't tried him, but I'll still mention him in the options. I think he will do really well too. He's also made for some long form fights. So by this time, you are really happy that most of the bad fights are almost done and you're about there at the end of it to clear it off. Now, the next fight is going to be the last one before the Grandmaster, and Nomex will start us with how to take him down with Wong because I think Wong and Asman are the best options for this fight. So I'll hand over to Nomex. Take it away, buddy. Nova, the only thing really I'd say that, like, kind of take care of is that uh, Nova takes minus 75% damage from all unblockable attacks. And since your, your SP2 is mainly unblockable when you charge a heavy into special 2, um, you want to try to charge it to like get your power, but then wait out your unstoppable, and then like parry special 2 or like intercept special 2, whatever you want. But try to throw it when you're not unblockable so it does full damage, because it's really gimped a lot if you throw it unblockable because of that ability. But other than that, make sure you bait SP1s because he's... Like, at least with me, he was more... 
into throwing SP1s, because once he gets to special 2, it was like a little bit more annoying to bait, and you could go to special 3 very easily. Um, start in, I would say green, because there's a lot of energy damage. You can eat the specials into block, if you want to dex them, sure, if you want to eat them, I'm not sure, because I was mostly either like fully dexing or just blocking, but don't risk it, especially if it's a like a rank 1, rank 2. But other than that, just bait SP1s, um, like get all your spells, spam SP2, try to spam SP2 when you're not unstoppable, so you don't get the unblockable, and just make sure the, like, the node really never came into play, but if it does at a bad time and it steals all your power, basically... That was it for the whole path. I am just gonna leave a Grandmaster last phase here, just like a little tease. I'm be dropping a separate video for it because otherwise this video will be too long. It'll be around 55 minutes. So I thought I will do path video separate and I will do Grandmaster separate. So this is just a sneak peek on the last phase four of it. Don't worry, there will be a complete video out on it. So stay tuned for that. I would like to do that video once and right, so it might take a week, another week. But yeah, if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below. I will try to tag as many YouTubers videos who have done solos or who have some good takedowns from all any uh, champion in the pinned comment. So make sure to check that out and show everybody some love and let's get this necropolis down and hit that crypt target of deaths. And yeah, apart from that guys, I hope you all have an amazing day and I'll see you on the next one. I'll probably do a part 2 run soon so stay tuned for that and if you haven't yet already make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. All of that really helps me out a lot. We are very near to 50,000 subs so let's get that and yeah. See you on the next one. Bye.